impressed, Rayhan? So, what? Are you impressed by that? I was blown away, boys. That was just top-notch stuff. I love it. <laughs> was that as horribly uh, jittery as it was for you guys as it was for me? No, it played for me. No, it was okay, good. good. And I also, Ron, I really loved uh, the picture of all the doves with that dog. Ron's not of what? Listening. Ron, you can talk now. So we forbid Ron from talking during the oh. intro. So Ron, you can talk now. Just kidding. Sounds like the uh, the <laughs> Wi-Fi might be a touch slow out there at the White Lake Hunting Lodge. Oh, oh. It's, uh, it's not connected to potential security. Casey, is there a potential security issue here? There we go. This should just this be is fun. Not good radio. And I got to hear all the barking and head on. So right now, in the beginning, when we were talking before this all started. You were wondering how professional this was going to be. You kind of see what kind of a cluster this is. Well, it's like, you know, anytime going on like a radio or, or a podcast, it's like, what's your background? And I was like, I don't know what these guys want to see. Like, I've got like bird dog stuff and like bird dog all about, but to err on the side of caution, I was just like, well, I'll just do one on the white background there. So if you want to tour of some old uh, antique bird dog stuff, you can do it. You could play with the green screen a little bit, maybe put yourself out in the uh, hey, you guys, out in the prairie. You guys want to hear something really funny? Yeah. You want to hear something really funny? I'm I'm reading this off the computer. Your computer thinks it's December thirty first, two thousand fourteen, which prevents Firefox from surely. How could that be? Why? They got to hear me. Something about Y2K? I, I don't get it. <laughs> but only 14 years after. <laughs> Rayon is in Doug's basement. So I'm kind of yeah. notorious for having a really crappy background in comparison to what everyone else is. Uh, I was just but, uh, Yeah. So, hey, everybody. I uh, It has been a long... Long time here. I don't want to move that. Here, I'm going to go ahead and mute Ron. If that's a bingo square, that's normal, Rayhan. Yes, so that's normal. 7, 704. There you go. <laughs> that's that's a new record for us. While well, he gets and you froze together. him too. I did freeze him. I don't know how I did that, but I uh, we need to figure it out. But uh, Nick, it's been a really long time since we've been with everybody. A couple we tried weeks. to do a little something. Yeah, we can. But that wasn't I mean, a full full episode. Yeah. No, it was, what, 25, 30 minutes a week before that. We got to hear about Ron's uh, trials and tribulations up in uh, the UP Hunt and Bear. Yeah. Um, you guys will notice that Tyler is still not with us. He is on his very last week of uh, guest up at Sharptail Ridge. I think Ron's trying to talk to us now, so let me unmute him. Um, but uh, I'm assuming that he'll probably join us a little bit later. And then uh, for those that you don't that don't know, up in the upper right corner, we've got uh, Mr. Rehan from Garmin International that is uh, making the, the, I guess we'll call it the podcast circuit. He's yeah. been on Nix, right? Have you launched that one yet? He recorded, or recorded this afternoon. Okay, so we're a little premature on that one, and uh, Ron yeah. dropped it a, a couple days ago. Yep. Um, so technically, I mean, we've kind of taken a step of a project up, but, right? You guys are beating me to the punch. Yeah, so we're going to mute Ron again. <laughs> we can't hear him. But uh, so, Rayhan, how you doing, man? Uh, yeah. uh, we got Ron coming in and out. I'm doing good. Uh, Nick and I were talking earlier. Season started uh, for me, Teal, and then I was up doing some grouse and pheasant. In Minnesota, and then we've got uh, Missouri here opens on Sunday, which is kind of the the home turf for me uh, for quail. So it's it's that time of the year where everything just seems to be coming together. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, I do. And I don't want to lay and not to jinx it. Nick and I were having this conversation earlier, but like the what sets the kind of like uh, you know what I mean. Obviously, you've got early season grouse and stuff like that, chickens and whatnot. 
but those things always beat me. So I don't really count them. But for me, it's always kind of the test is like, how does Minnesota, because I go up every year for Minnesota opener and I typically do a grouse and a pheasant hunt. So I kind of set my standard for how the year is going to go based on how that trip is and touch wood. I think we're in, you know, for a good year. Last yeah. year, tough year though, so it couldn't get much worse. So, so spending time up in, uh, in Minnesota, did you get to hunt? So you and Nick got to do some hunting together. Yeah. Briefly, yep. <laughs> Well, I was like, there was no way I was going to Duluth and not giving Nick Larson a call. I told him, I was like, you're kind of the unofficial guide for Duluth. Yeah. So you get stuck. Uh, but yeah, I went up a couple days early. Uh, I was there with my wife. And I was there for probably about a week total. But yeah, I got in some grouse and uh, pheasant as well. So can't complain there, I guess. Was that um, your first hunting of the season there in September? No, I... Uh, in, wait, I'm sorry, in September? Well, when you were in Duluth, it was late September. No, it was early October. Was it really? Yeah, I was supposed to come up late September. Oh, okay. Yeah, you did come up, yeah, first week in October, yep. Yeah, first week in October. No, I've been out teal hunting. I didn't get out this year uh, chicken hunting. That was, I normally get out and just, obviously, chicken hunting is walking as many miles as you can. Uh, but this year, I didn't. Uh, I did more teal hunting. I I built a cedar strip kayak just to shoot teal out of because no way. Yeah, that was my COVID project, and I didn't nice. shoot teal out of it, so I don't know what that says. But you have you you've been successful out of it. Uh, no, I have not, Nick. You have not. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. <laughs> Do you have a spot up front for the setter to sit? Oh God, no, <laughs> no. Although I have I have teal hunted with her before, and uh, she surprised me. I didn't even know that dog could swim, and then she and I staked her in. Because she just wants to, you know, she eat that way. But when that first teal came in, the first time I took a teal hunting, that dog ripped the stake out and started swimming and almost drowned herself on the way out because, she, you know, she was getting out there with the stake. I was like, hey, get back here. But she brought birds back to hand. So take away you can get it. But, and for those of you guys that don't know, uh, Rayhan's got a red setter. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, right? Not an Irish setter, but. I don't know if there's a difference between the two, but red setter. Yeah, there is uh, red setters are field dog stud book. They are not recognized. I, they may be now, but I don't think they're recognized by AKC. It was essentially uh, the hunt on the Irish setter was bred out. Um, they're bred to show and then they cross them back with English to get the hunt back in them. So that's how you get the red setter. So, gotcha. So, yeah. so on your guys, uh, little ex, I guess, how did you guys do together? Well, we we met up. It was getting towards it was getting towards the end of Rayhan's week, and we were communicating all week. He was asking me about spots, and then he was driving around scouting, and he was telling me about spots. I'm like, I haven't been down that road in years, but he was he was doing a little reconnaissance for me, so it was cool. But it was getting to be about the end of his stay, and we decided that I was heading to my cabin in Wisconsin, but. We're like, you've been, you're in Duluth, we got to hunt. And uh, Rayhan was up with his buddy Steve, and we met up for an afternoon. And it was near an area where Rayhan was kind of poking around, and we were looking at some spots. It was a new spot. We went in there. It was kind of a hot afternoon, and I had never been in there. So I don't know if I don't know if Rayhan was expecting me to go take him deep into, into one of the honey holes. But uh, we did a little prospecting. And at that point, the, the conditions were odd. It was Everything was bone dry. And it was a little bit tough to pin down the grouse, I felt like. But we found – we flushed like three or four grouse on a swamp edge, but no shot opportunities. And uh, I marched them through some alders and through some swamps. But I don't know what you recall oh, that day, Rayon. I remember <laughs> classic grouse hunting of just like, why am I doing this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was good. We put up some woodcock as well. And we the did. Was, yeah, the thing that surprised me is that whole area that we were in really did look really nice for grouse like it was one of those it was one of those walks where and that's the thing about you know i mean all birds but grouse i think especially too is it was one of those walks i was expecting every corner to have a bird come out of it you know what i mean and yeah it, it was, was it was birdie looking stuff and we just weren't finding them they were all in that real specific seam between the alders and the high ground and it was just it, it played out weird yeah it did but i mean overall that whole area, I mean, the spots that you threw at me and the other ones, yep. like I said, it all came together. So, you know, yep. I hate saying it, but it's the truth. It's that's hunting, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. You put some birds in the bag that week. So that was cool. Yeah, that was good. Cause, uh, I've been two the past two years of grouse hunting have been a little hard for me. Uh, so I was glad. And then the main thing with that is Steve had never been, he had never connected on a grouse. Right. He got, I mean, he got pretty lucky pretty quick on that one. So I was happy about that. And he also, you know, we were talking earlier about getting bit by the grouse, bud, and it just getting in your blood. And Steve had been missed a shot last year at a rough, and he had just been perseverating on it for an entire year. <laughs> yeah. He was, that burden. He, was he, he was good. That's cool. Yeah. So I'm gonna see if we got Ron. Let me take him off. Hey, Ron, can we? Can you? Can you talk now? He looks frozen. He's sitting there. He's just frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped off. Yeah, there's another one they've got added here, but uh... <laughs> can you hear me? Oh, we can. <laughs> okay, it says that my phone, my my laptop has no camera, which is impossible because it's a Mac and there's a little camera up there, and it's got so one. Where where do I gotta go into my settings to find the camera? Uh, if it You're says you can the wrong me. camera, that sounds bad. What sounds bad, Nick? If, if it says if it's saying you have no camera, that sounds bad. Like it's not a. Now he's gone. Well, I want. Can we just? <laughs> this is horrible radio. Wild card from now on. On air production. Uh, yeah. Who knows? Well, but, I did see. Uh, I did see that Jackson Roberts is on and viewing. So I was gonna give everybody a bingo square and show them this gin bottle that was uh, graciously sent to me by viewer Jackson Roberts. Jackson came all the way up here and we hunted the North Woods for an afternoon, and he shot his first grouse and was all pumped about it. And for some reason, decided to send me a bottle of gin. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have one of these, Rayhan. Good on you. <laughs> So, so he shot his first and second, didn't he? Uh, yes. He, he. It was funny. He. We were out with uh, Jackson and myself. Uh, myself and Jared Elm, uh, Forest Wildlife Specialist for the Rough Grouse Society, and another one of, like kind of talking about Ray Hunt. It was the early season, weird conditions. Like we, the grouse just were not very predictable and the only person that got a shot at a grouse today was ja or on that day was jackson he shot at two of them and he killed them both and that was his first and second grouse so it was pretty cool good, good on you probably yeah. a highlight for that whole yeah. trip yeah yeah, yeah we had... go, ahead. go ahead ran no i was going to interject i had a question for you right you as mr grouse i just keep having questions you know how i say it's like first snow for what is it for you? Like, what's your defining like? Okay, this is the moment that grouse hunting now starts getting good. Uh oh, yeah. Like, like, at what point in the season? Yeah, is there a magical moment that you just every year, year over year, you say, oh, "This is it." You know, it's it. Yeah, it's, it's nothing as defining as the first snow. I mean, the easy thing would be to say when all the leaves are down, but that's pretty subjective because they drop at different times. One thing I, I look at is, you know, your maple leaves fall first, then you're at, then you're, which I don't really care because I'm not really trying to be in the maples, but then your aspens and your birches are going to turn yellow and your hazel brush for us, hazel brush is a big component of a lot of covers. Once the hazel brush leaves come down, which is probably around that mid October mark, then at that point, the woods really seem like they open up and then my mind is kind of saying this is prime time and it really it has to do with shooting and and along with that the grouse are spreading out the broods are hopefully breaking up so the way i'm visualizing it is the grouse are as dispersed and as mobile as they're going to be the cover is down this is it dogs are going to find them we're going to get shot opportunities that's it but then that really persists all the way until i think the, for me, in my mind, when the snow flies here, I that's that's when I'm like, damn, I get depressed. Like total opposite of the pheasant hunter, we got snow early and it was too much snow last week. And it's there's still grouse hunting to be done and people can still hunt in the snow. But once the snow flies, it changes for me. But I think we're gonna be lucked out because the weather's gonna change and we're gonna melt some snow. So we got good hunting ahead. There we go. Oh, Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it feels a lot better to be sitting at a normal computer again. 
You're home. Yes, okay. I'm home. That, uh, so you guys, you guys can hear me, but you can't see me? Yes, we yeah, can hear you it's pretty all right, Ron. We've got, the, we've got the only part that really matters. Good. All right, so i got one comment here. I live next to the distillery. Oh, so that's why he sent it. He lives next to the uh, distillery. Yeah, and, Jackson, you know, he sent me a picture of the, of the creek, creek, and he said the water, the water used to make that gin came right out of this. Did Jackson, did his photo have a uh, Boykin Spaniel in it? I bet you that, that uh, is it a Boykin? Yeah, he's got a Boykin and Setters. Yeah. Nice. Yep. So I guess what we could probably do in uh, get into some of the conversation that we brought Rehan on for, because we've been mumbling on as we tried to figure out how to get this tech shit to work, is uh, Garmin just launched some uh, some badass new gear. And uh, for those of you guys that have been either living under a rock or uh, don't have social media, the uh, the new Garmin Alpha 200i has uh, been the long awaited. There it is right there. Ooh, I will probably, I it's green. All of it's green. Yeah, I'll probably that. have to make a run out to the truck and go grab mine because I know I'm going to have uh, questions that I want to ask while we're playing around with it. But uh, so I know it's been in development for a long time. We finally got it out. How's uh, how's been the initial launch of it, and, and I guess feedback from the from those that have had had it, been using it, and uh, sharing back with you guys. So here's kind of how I always measure like the success of something is that if I get people calling me, you know, for product kind of stuff like that, it's like okay, it's doing well. There's there's that has the top um, No, most of this is. It's a lot. Are you guys getting feedback? Yes, a little bit. Who's that on? Who's that? Is that on? Doug, Doug, do you have headphones? Hang on. Yeah, that was a little annoying. Can you guys still hear me? We can, we can hear you. Hear you oh, that's great. I, you know, all you see is a little. Step. I don't know what's going on. I can't figure it out, and I don't care. <laughs> That's, That's funny. funny. We were not, not getting the feedback, feedback for a while. But but I'm wondering if it's, if it's coming from your phone. phone or you your phone? No, my phone's off. I'm on my laptop, but oh, I don't. I, my, for some reason, my I'm going to keep deking around. Somewhere in the settings has to be the, the camera, right? I mean, somewhere in there. I would think I would so. Think so. Nick, Nick, just drive over here and help me, will you? <laughs> I'll beat a South Dakota in, what, what, eight, eight hours? Eight hours? Yeah, yeah, you can make it. <laughs> can I hunt? Can I hunt? Yeah, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll throw you in for a day. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just, uh, 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 extend to everybody? everybody? What's that? I said, does that invitation extend to everybody? Invitation extend to everybody? Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you can get up here, we start on Thursday. I got an extra bed in the room. We're good. Nice. Nice. But I, I would like to address Doug one. Uh, <laughs> who's yeah. me? What, what's going on with this? Yeah, feedback loop. Yeah, it's terrible. All right, let's figure right. this out. Let's figure this. Ron, Ron's. yeah, Doug. Ron's. It's Ron's. It is, yeah. It is, yeah. All right, you want me to go back on my phone? Would that be better than this computer? I think so. I think so. All right, let me, uh, let me just, let me just whip this, let me just whip this out. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go here. It's Ron, it's hey, Ron, Ron, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Oh, you know, you guys are something else. All right, I'm gonna close my computer. All right. Oh, anyway, boy, so, boy. so 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 the, the the value of a uh, or, or the uh, success of a device is based off of the the uh, the amount of people asking for promo codes. Yeah, so yeah. I can tell you that I have had an insane amount of people doing the same for me. Well, it's the long and short is it's been a long way to get it. You know, it's like the original one hundred came out. I want to say in two thousand twelve. Yep. So it's been eight years, and it's like. Everybody on this call knows it and has used that unit. Like that, like all joking aside, that unit kind of changed the way I interact with dogs and how I just hunt in general. And I think it did the same for a lot of people. 
And it's like this thing I've got one right here. It's like it's the old standby. Like I love this thing. I never I never thought I'd put it down, but with the two hundred I there's just a lot of horsepower in that two hundred I. It's eight years of development that kind of came back. Um, really, you know, listening to customers, what do we need, what do we don't you know, what do we want, what do we don't want, how can we make it better? And what you came what it comes down to is now you got the Alpha two hundred I. So yeah, it's uh it's a pretty incredible unit. Uh, what how have you thought? What have you thought about it so far? You know, I uh, so I got it. Um, I, I got it in a little bit early because uh, you know we we got we got our inventory delivered. I don't know the Friday before, so I was able to take it with me out to North Dakota. I, so I got it set up, got my waypoints transferred over, um, and I, so far I've been really really happy with it. Um, some of the really annoying things about the Alpha One Hundred, you know, the the obvious. Uh, you know, I live up in northern Michigan, so I do hunt a lot when it's extremely cold and mm -hmm. not being able to, to push buttons. So the fact that I have designated buttons that I can actually go in and click with a pair of gloves yeah. on has been the biggest uh, the, the, the biggest feature change that I think that I've enjoyed the most. Yeah. Um, you know, especially when I was out in North Dakota, it got really cold really fast. You know, so having the, the ability to do that um, and being able to, to flip that through the menus, you know, so my training buttons, I can got each dog set up with their own individual individual settings. So now I didn't have to have just three buttons and each dog only having one setting, you know, so I can set up the, you know, every dog had their own, you know, their own. Page yeah. So that's kind of going into, just to, uh, you can kind of see there's the training key set up. And so there's these three buttons up here for everybody watching. And then there's these two new ones right here. And yeah. those a lot to toggle through. And so you can set up exactly how you want it. Um, what's most useful for you and like Nick and I were talking about this earlier it's like everybody has a different hunting style from where you hunt how you hunt and mine's gonna be different than yours yours is gonna be different than Nick's and it all kind of comes down to what do you find valuable like I said the Alpha 100 and the 200 they both have a whole lot of horsepower to it and so mm -hmm. how do you want to, how do you want to customize it for your own you know style for me you know for me, I just like letting the dog roll and going, but I, you know, I set it up for like new hunt um, and the reach commands on it. Like that's one of the features for me that like I am a diehard in reach fan. And, you know, before I started with Garmin, I didn't use in reach, but now I don't go anywhere without it. And so for that, when I found out that that was going to be incorporated into 200i, like that, that just threw the roof for me because I feel like it's one of the most critical pieces of gear that we as hunters can keep with us and now that it's right you know there's the sos button right there obviously you can text directly off of this and for those for everybody listening who's not familiar i'm talking about inreach which is uh it's a two-way sms communication device that operates on the iridium satellite service so it essentially has global coverage whereas if you're out hunting and you don't have cell service you with the iridium with inreach you still have the ability to text people get in contact you know, and always have that line of communication with people. But not only that, it has an SOS capability with it. So God forbid, you know, you, you fall and break your leg in the middle of North Dakota, you know, your dogs aren't going to carry you out. And you can hit that SOS button and essentially the cavalry is coming. It sends a message. It sends a beacon to GEOS, which is an emergency, global emergency service. They contract back down with local authorities. Those local authorities will come and get you whether it be the military, whether it be, you know, sheriff, whether it be local EMS or whatever. Uh, so it's kind of a dual purpose thing in terms of being able to be in contact with people you love and love you, but then also if you think you're good, you something happen, you have the ability to, to hit an SOS button. So, so do you have a way to, me uh, to measure, you know, when you, out of the devices that are sold, what percentage of them activate and are utilizing the inReach function? I don't know that off the bat, but what I will tell you is, in terms of subscribers, InReach I think is the number one in the world. You know, there are other there are other function there are other companies similar to this. Like but Spot, yeah, yeah. When it comes down to it, InReach is the number one. And when you look at Garmin, like this is how we feel about that product. It's been integrated into a lot of different things, and a lot of different people like it. You know, everywhere from you know, aviation uses it, marine uses it, outdoor uses it. Like the list just goes on and on and on just because of how valuable it is to anybody who gets outside. 
It, and you, I think you kind of see that. So if you if you spend any time on social media or Instagram, you see, you know, for the last probably 10 to 12 months, you've seen lots of Instagram photos with guys carrying their alphas on their on their vest, but then they've also got the the inReach Mini on their on their waist, right? So yeah, it's it's it was part of it. So being able to integrate the two together was almost it was almost necessary, you know, especially for an upland hunter that wants to keep the gear low light, you know, especially if you're out doing chucker hunting or you're spending a long day out in the prairie. Grouse hunters, it's not so much of a big deal, I don't think, because our our walks are short and we don't spend as much time in the covers as as some other guys do. Um, but I think uh, I think the combination of the two is, is is super cool. I haven't got to play with the in reach function of it yet. Um, I probably, you know, if, if I was going to activate it, I probably would have, should have done it when I headed out to North Dakota. Um, but just in the, in the means of, you know, be, understanding the product and, and understanding customers' questions, it's something that I definitely need to, well, to get into and get involved in. That's one of the things that's nice also about inReach where it's kind of like, if you think about it like a cell phone plan, right? Like you got to activate it, but it's like 12 bucks a month and then it goes up to like 65 or 70. And then in that process, though, you can turn it on and off. Right, so you can have, uh, if you're saying, all right, I'm going out to Dakota for a month. That, you're good to go. You can turn it back off. But yeah. the long short is, I think that once you start using it, you're not going to want to stop using it. it. Go ahead, Nick. What I was going to say, what is the, just thinking about, like, we've come a long way with cell phones since we started carrying around Nokia 5165s. I don't know if you had one of those, Rayhan, but, so but yeah. like, no. I'm, just, I'm just thinking about what is the usability of this in reach? Like when you, you go on, like, let's say you're in remote woods, you got no service, you go on here and you send a text. I mean, is it just bam, it just gets delivered and you're having a conversation. I'm just curious because I've never even seen it in action. Or do you have like searching for satellite signal, you have hiccups? I mean, how does no, it work? For the most part, it's pretty instantaneous. You know, just because the, the satellite coverage on that is so good. There are times like if you are in like a deep canyon or something like that, sure. where it's searching. But the thing is, it's always, you can, I believe you can also set the amount of time that it's searching for, um, either tr searching for a message or sending a message, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. In regard to, I'm going to see if I can't do this backwards. Like, this is just a screen like, from the home, if you can see it. Yep. Just go straight into that, get the activation. There's your SOS. You can track off of it so people can track you. Yep. If you want to send a message, like, you just send a message right there, and it has, you know, you can start typing right on a keyboard right there. Okay, yep, cool. Okay. And what I've also know it's pretty easy to pair it with Bluetooth. I mean, the, the big another big difference between the the 100 and the 200 is that it has Bluetooth, right? So you can uh -huh. Bluetooth it with your phone and almost in, yeah. in, you essentially send in reach messages right from your phone and, and utilize your contact list right from your device. Oh, right. your smartphone. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what the mini. That's what people you know you can Bluetooth into that into your cell phone. Use that from mapping capabilities and then also from that. So yeah, uh, it's just in terms of like kind of talk about this a lot. But just in terms of an ecosystem product, it fits in really well with the ecosystem, you know. And that's one of the things that I've always really admired about Garmin is creating products that aren't just standalone products. You know, if the whole goal of of having the, these technologies is to make you more efficient and safer and a better hunter and more enjoyable, then they should all be able to work together, right? And so that's why, for example, the 200i. You know, you can sync in with your watch, and so you can track your dogs off your watch. You can trigger an SOS. You know, there's all those different things that you can do um, all within the program. Cool. Is the, is the in reach, so you said um, trigger an SOS from your, the, the, the watches themselves, you can trigger SOS so that it uh, in reach is part of that ecosystem on your watch? Yeah. So, be, like, for example, before the 200i, People would a lot of times carry the Pro 550 Plus and then one of these, right? And mm -hmm. then sync both the Pro 550 Plus and this into your watch. Huh. If you fall, and so when you think about it, and this goes back to the idea that's like everything goes to plan until it doesn't in the outdoors, right? Yeah. And you can you can even have your in reach on you, but let's say it's in your pack and you fall down the side of a cliff or something, chucker hunting. Because that's what would happen. Yeah, uh, it's easier, you know, easier to get to your watch at that. Yeah, point. Yeah, you can yeah. trigger directly off of your watch. That's and cool. I, I'd like I'd like to interject something on the chucker hunting. 
if you chucker hunt and you fall down a hill, we shouldn't have to save your dumb ass. Okay, <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot better places to hunt in this country than slip shale mountains in Utah. I would so, disagree with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> there should be a disclaimer on the inreach. If you hunt somewhere that's really stupid, you don't get help. Are you saying people shouldn't hunt chucker? What's exactly, up? Exactly, Nick. Yes. <laughs> Ronnie, but when you're your age, even the prairies of North Dakota could be could be a risk for you. Uh, yeah, but yeah, what like you, you could tumble down the side of a hill a chasing a shark tail. Right. If, if, if I went chucker hunting and needed help, it's like the ice fishermen on Saginaw Bay that keep putting more planks out from the bank to the ice. You know this, Nick, from Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, that guy's putting more off. planks out. And then eventually, they're like, oh, we didn't know we were going to be on an ice float. And the Coast Guard's got to come get them off of an ice float. I'm sorry. There should be a button on the on the inReach that says dumbass. Dumbass not included. Well, oh, my God. Garmin oh. can't control who ends up with these things, Ronald. Yes, they can. There's big data out there, Nick. Oh, my God. This is, uh, Nick, I'm going to add that one to the suggestion box. Okay, here. yeah. I already gave you one for the suggestion <laughs> box earlier. Is uh, are, are you cool with answering questions along the way? Uh, if I can answer them. Uh, yeah, yeah, so they'll pop up at the top here. So uh, Michael is asking, is there an auto screen lock? Uh, I think you, you can. So, for example, like back on the 100, you were able to lock out the screen. Yep. Yes, you, you should. Able to do that on this. And what's nice about the uh, the new one is you don't have that ledge around the outside of it, so it's more like a cell phone where it's a smooth it's smooth across it. So you're not trying to to you know push your finger into the corner, right, the, to get that this, lock button to get that yeah. lock button. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So by the way, here it is right there. It's the same like on the 100. You just press the power, and you can lock screen or you can lock keys on that one. Okay. So there you go. Right. So yeah. That way you can lock that out. You can lock the screen out, but not lock the keys out. Right. Yeah. The ability to continue to use the actual yep. button functionality. What about? I'm curious about when I got first bought my Alpha. I, but they had them at the time. I went on Amazon and bought a screen protector because I'm used to doing that with all my cell phones and stuff. Do you run a screen protector on your on your Alphas, Rayhan, or you don't worry about it? No, I don't worry about it. Okay. Um, these are tough ones. These are new screens, um, so they are they're a tough one. Um, what I will tell people to do, I don't know how you guys carry yours, but I carry it in a holster on the belt. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it's a leather one. I don't have it here. But what I always tell people on that one is double that up. If you're carrying in a holster, just use a double double system um, to keep it on your – like clip it to your belt, but then also clip it on something else um, with a carabiner or something like that. Just because so I get calls all the time that like, oh, man, I lost it or something like that. So that ruins yeah. You don't want to lose it. And that's the one thing that I have noticed in, in something that I I can say that, you know, within a, a week of everyone that has bought one from me so far is, is come back and, hey, when are the cases? When are we going to start seeing some sort of a, you know, a tethering to, uh, system? Um, you know, I know that they've got the, the carabiners that you can buy, the Garmin carabiners for the the Alpha 100. I'm pretty sure it's the same, it's the same switch. So, I mean, you could essentially. Yeah, I would you know, think it would to, work in there. Yep. Yeah, you can see that it has that capability, so you can loop it through. What I was yep. referencing were a third party, um, like, man, I think Coyote Leather, I think I bought one from them a long time ago. Um, there's a number of the saddle guys, I know they make them. Um, you know, there's other ones out there, but they make leather holsters, both for horseback, but then also walking. Uh, so that's kind of what I would say. I have used just as a like a user report i've used that garmin carabiner i had the original one now i got the new black one and i've had that thing strapped on my vest on the outside of my vest in the grouse woods for over six years and have not double tethered it i mean that's good advice and i, I always think I, that i i've been meaning to i just haven't but i have it strapped in in a way where it's not bouncing and swinging around so i i think that helps but those carabiner clips are they're not going to fall apart on you. For sure. I out. trust those carabiner clips. Yeah. But what I was saying with the leather ones is when you're going bushwhacking and it gets wet and stuff. Oh, yeah. Bouncing and. Wow. 
those. Yeah, I've seen issues with those, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, next question. So, uh, Rayhan, how easy is it to use the training capabilities of the remote? Uh, is there a tone vibrating simulation? I, we kind of touched on that, but maybe you want to yeah. dig in a little bit more about what the buttons, how the buttons have changed. So, the side yeah, menus. there is the tone vibrating sim again. And again, it all kind of comes back to how you want to set it up. Um, and you do have the ability with this one. I don't have this one set up, but you can kind of see that these top ones are completely customizable now, um, and they're really easy to customize how you want to do it. And I'm sorry to be kind of doing it this way. You set up, you just go training setup, training keys, and you can add in whatever you want, you know, yeah. from that side. So, and it's really what you want. And so from a training standpoint, I think from an e-collar training standpoint, this has also been a pretty significant. So that's all I would answer that. Getting mine turned on. So there's right a, now, I'm oh, using, okay. this is basically what I use. It's just a retractable. That's pretty uh, serious. Yep. And it locks in. I've got one more. I've got a, some new ones on order just because this one weighs more than eight ounces. But yeah, and it just wow. it clips on. It's made out of Kevlar. Something super easy. And then just hang it from the top. But I, uh, I do like that that Garmin carabiner. It's just it's a little bit more streamlined and it fits a little bit closer to the body. <laughs> Uh, there was a couple other questions that I was yep. looking for, but they're coming in pretty quick. There's a good question there from Mark Coleman, because I've seen this plenty with my Alpha. He's asking about really like if there's any customizability in the tone of the the sounds that it makes. I've never m messed with that, but like when you when I got my Alpha on lock and then it bumps against my vest, it'll it makes a tone at you. Right. Yeah, so his question is, can you turn that off or change it? Because it's the same tone as when the dog goes on point. So sometimes you get excited and you shouldn't. <laughs> Let me think about that. Yeah. Thing, so when the screen bumps on the tone, it's locked out to let you know that it is locked. Yeah. I don't know the way to turn that off. Okay. I haven't encountered that. So I'm sorry. I can check that out and, and try to find that out. Okay. Yeah. If you could just turn that tone off, that probably would be because most of the time it's like i know i have it locked and i don't need to know that but yeah yeah no um geez man that's a great question i've never really thought about that but good point that's kind of the nuanced stuff doug you're muted uh yeah so training do you use the touch screen or are there buttons on the side so it's kind of both really Doug, you're muted. <laughs> there we go. Is that better? <laughs> yeah. So you've got your designated buttons, and then on the side of it, you can flip through. So there's essentially, I don't know if you guys can see, but those buttons at the top change. And there's a, there's four pages that you can predefine, and you can flip through them. And then you've got a, a button on the side for selecting them. So, you know, I've got each dog set up with tone vibrate or tone uh, continuous and momentary, and then I can flip yep. to the next dog. And then I've got two set up with, you know, the, the various features that I use most. Um, but they do have the, the actual physical buttons, which, again, it's, if, you're, if you're going out in the cold or using your using your gloves, it makes things just a, a thousand times easier. Yeah. Yeah, from what I understand, I haven't had my hands on the 200 much, but from what I understand, the those quick keys giving you, like Doug said, four pages of different options, like you have a lot more at your fingertips, pun intended. <laughs> it can be more than four pages too. So oh, okay, cool. So you can add. Oh, I didn't know that you could add more than four. I think it's even add more. Than four. That's okay. uh, that's something I'll have to play with because I uh, I haven't noticed that yet. But I, and honestly, like if you think about it, with what that what I have set up, I mean, I, I guess if you have more than if you're running, you know, more than four dogs, or you know, and, and you you want to set something up like that. But I, I would assume that if you're running a pack of dogs or if you're a houndsman, um, you're not needing, you know, a, a continuous and nick uh tone for every single dog so you're setting up multiple dogs on each page sure would, would seem like it would make a little bit more sense um there and i and i know think that we got into if we if you were to break down say the top five differences between the the 100 and the 200 you know obviously the in reach is kind of the yeah. big one there but so what, what would you, if you look at it like first and foremost complete redesign on it i think that it's got a better hand fit in general um, two, I think that it's got a larger screen and sunlight yeah. display. 
So if like if you compare the screens between these two, right? This is a three inch. That's a three point five inch, but it's a sunlight readable display as well. And so that's one of the things with the Alpha. It's always pulled double duty from Hound to Upland. And at night, it was really nice because of that backlit screen. But then you all know sometimes during you know if you're hunting midday bright sun, it was difficult to read. But this one, it's a sunlight readable display, so it just pops off completely. Um, Obviously, the quick key setup going through it, the training commands on it from that side, being able to customize it, that's going to be one of the main difference. Uh, you look at it, you obviously have you, the in-reach capability with it. Um, that's that side of it. You also, and this kind of is more on the houndsman side of thing, but you have the ability to make dogs active or inactive, and you also have the ability to group them. So with the, with the two, and I know from a bird dog perspective, this doesn't matter as much, but this is a huge thing in the hound world in the sense where you used to only be able to have 20 caller IDs in, in at one time, right? And if you wanted to add in more, you'd have to delete out callers and add in mm -hmm. callers. This one, you can have up to 200, I think it is, where you make it within groups, dogs within groups, and then caller IDs, either active or inactive. Um, so that's kind of that aspect of it. Those are a couple of top line features. But when yeah, you played around with it, it's one of those things where I think like one of the things I'm really proud about is just the usability and user interface is really is really good on the two hundred thousand. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and honestly, if, if you were to have this and, and say Ron were to pick this up and take it out of the box, it's it's probably something that he could even use right out of the box um, without a. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> without a ton of uh, a ton of help the thing that i appreciate the most and, it, and not that it's it's a big deal but you know on the alpha 100 you have to scroll up and you just got this extremely long page um yeah. where the the 200 has you know the individual pages and it scrolls you know right to left you know so you're not having to do anything so each page has everything right on front and it, it by doing that, it, it almost it makes it more, I guess, intuitive to how you would use your cell phone. So, yeah. you know, for, for those that are, are very versed in their, their Android or Apple phone, it's going to work really similar to that. You know, so out of the box, it it, 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 it is going to have a very uh, familiarity that, you know, that the Alpha 100 just doesn't have. And what's cool is, too, is that, you know, you can take these icons and strip away everything that you don't use. So, you know, like the, um, what is it, the contest tracker timer or yeah, you know and, and not strange though it's like some people like that's their favorite thing because they oh, yeah. kind of in and stuff like that so it's just weird how it gets that specific in terms of what it is that you like right yeah um yeah. but yeah i i I'm, i really do appreciate the, the simplicity all right so more than i did there's more than four screens on it so you can pretty much do as many as you want to think that. oh that's cool that is really cool um, is there, is there, I guess what, I wonder what I was doing wrong when I, I couldn't figure that out. I'll have to play with it again Sure. when I'm, when I'm done, but, um, <laughs> isn't it funny though? It's like, you get this in your hand and you're just like, oh man, like, what the, you know what I mean? I'm going to do this and that and you know, figure that out. So yeah. yeah and, and I thought I'd been putting it through the, through the ranks, but I guess not. <laughs> well, there's just, like I said, it's a lot of horsepower to it. And it's just, I guess at the end of the day, you know, uh, you can talk. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, about the long and short is, I think, like, it's just an incredible unit that there's been a lot of thought, a lot of hard work, and a lot of engineering, and a lot of listening to what people wanted, um, and trying to make all of that and combine it into a unit that is easy to use, effective, efficient, and just becomes kind of part of your your kit of what you need. Like that's how mm -hmm. I describe that. Yeah. Um, so this question has come up a ton. Um, how quickly does the unit recognize a dog on point? I think um, the biggest driver of that, you know, with the Alpha 100, you know, a dog could, you know, locks up on point, and it was approximately 10, 10 ish seconds before the device recognized um, yeah. whether or not it was on point. I, and I, from my experience so far, it's been the same. But maybe you can share a little bit of why that is. Yeah, so you can actually customize that um, in terms of how how quickly you want that updating. Um, and when you look at it, uh, I believe that this is pretty much the reason why is that anytime that you're really looking at battery usage within anything, GPS is always going to be that functionality that um, makes 
that is a is a battery use, right? Because it's thinking going up and going back down. And so you can set it, I'm pretty sure, as little as 2.5 seconds. So, for example, the Pro 550 Plus is set at a constant 2.5 second update rate. You can do that. Um, you can do a 10 second, I want to say 10 second, 30 second, and then you can go like you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour. Then you can even do it where if you set it into emergency mode, it's once every but um and again that's just trying to essentially say all right i can't find my dog give me a last thing so by but, doing that though is that changing so changing a refresh rate is just the, the amount of times that the collar and the, the handheld interact but when the dog goes on point though isn't the that 10 seconds kind of a static like when I, it, it, I thought it, it was on. the number in my head, and I feel like I remember reading this in the Alpha 100 manual is that, or maybe I'm pulling this from another caller, but for it to send an on point notification, the dog has to be motionless for seven seconds. And so where you would get that 10 seconds, Doug, is if it just, it's pings, extra, it just pings the GPS, the two, the two second where refresh he's at, rate, right? And then the dog goes on point, and then it's two and a half, and then it's seven seconds, and another two and a half, like. The timing can be weird, but I think the dog does have to be motionless for a, some amount of time before it will say on point, and then you get that. And I don't know if yeah. the two and a half or the seven second are connected, but yeah, no. And I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand that question. It was the update rate is every two point five mm -hmm. second that can be customizable. Yep. The actual on point, you're right, Nick. I think it's right in that wheelhouse of about seven seconds from that side, and that may just be because it's back up and down and. There's also yeah. things within that collar that are essentially signifying, okay, this dog is no longer moving and it's not, also it's not sitting, it's, you know, there's a lot of things going on with that. Yeah, the accelerometers and stuff yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, and, and if the dog, I mean, if the dog goes on point and the, and the collar is just pinging the, the handheld and you've got it set to 10 to, you know, 20 seconds, you know, essentially it could, the dog could essentially be on point. I mean, if, if everything timed out perfectly, the dog could be on point for 30 seconds before you even get that notification on your device, right? So that, I mean, the way that I would understand that. Unless the point notifications are sent independently of the update rate, but I don't know that. You guys got so far in the week. With that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wanna say, yeah, I wanna say that that, that 10, like that 10 seconds, I, I don't know that I've ever had it go longer than that, but um, I've always got a two second, two and a half second refresh rate, mostly because I'm where I hunt. I don't, you know, the battery's not, um, you know the battery life isn't super important. You know I know it says that it's got a twenty light or twenty hour battery life. I will tell you that um, if you go out into a hunt with the expectation that you're going to get twenty hours on it, um, you know I, I would, you know I, I would uh, be cautious of that. You know I I think that twenty hours is you know perfect conditions and clear line of sight and no loss serv signal and because I, I, I honestly I was probably more like the eight to eight to nine hours of uh of heavy usage um but i mean still eight to nine hours of hunting is going to get you pretty much your entire day right yeah um, yeah and again that comes back down to a lot of it comes back down to in terms of how you have your your settings and stuff like that update um, rate yeah update rate gps rate how much are you using that's right yeah um and, it, and it's super easy to change the battery too so i mean keeping you know, keeping an additional battery in your packet. It's, you know, it's what I did with the Alpha 100 if I needed it, um, especially after it, you know, they hit five, six years old. Um, you know, just having an extra battery is, is super easy and you can get cradle chargers so you can charge them both at the same time. Um, I'm trying to think of some other, some other things, that, questions that came up. So the big one, and, I, and I've never really been able to get a definitive answer, and this question has probably come up no less than 50 times. When, when talking about the alpha, especially more so, I think, with upland hunters than, than with houndsmen. But do you ever see or has there ever been any testing about integrating some sort of a, a beeper locator? Um, you know, and, and I say that because... Did somebody ask you that already today, Rayon? It, it was asked. It was actually asked three times uh, on, oh on Ron's uh, Instagram, and then somebody sent me a message actually just a couple seconds ago. That's why. So it, I mean, within the last twenty four hours, it's it's been asked at least five times. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's a question that I do get. Uh, I get that a lot too. So Nick, I appreciate the setup on this one, my friend. Hey man. <laughs> no, it's um, no. So the way that the systems work 
where there's been a couple of beepers in the past. For this one, how it works, it's just a completely different system. Um, and so that's why it can't integrate with... Uh, it can't the, integrate with the G3. Right. And yeah. so that side of it, it really, that just hasn't been developed for this particular unit um, with it. And I, there's, like Nick and I were having this conversation earlier, like, you know, the hearing a growl, you know, hearing like a, a, a dog roll through the grouse woods with a bell on is like beautiful. You know, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful sound. I personally, like, Personally, I've never been a big fan of beepers or bells. I used to use them, but for me, I like hunting silent. Um, and so I really like the more and more that you, with. me personally, use GPS, the less and less I like any other noise going on there. So I think that people will continue to adopt to that. Um, but hey, you know, to each their own. If you like running a beeper, run the beeper. Um, personally, I do also use the tone on it, which by no means is a beeper, but in situations where I need to know like a quick locate, I use that. Um, and I've shot a lot of shotguns and I can still hear that quite well um, within a decent amount of range. And then once it's pretty much out of that range, I'll switch to GPS from that side. So uh, to answer your question directly, no, that does not have that, that capability to, up, to integrate with an up and beeper. The long and short is it just operates on a completely different system and there hasn't been the people developed for that. Do you, and I think necessarily a, like a, not a necessarily an add on beeper, but I think what most guys were, were hoping that when the, when the new one came out, it was all going to be integrated into the same box, you know? So I think, I think some of the problem, you know, you've got this gigantic box on the, on the regular um, TT 15, you've got GPS, you've got, you know, you need to be able to have a battery big enough to, to handle what it's doing. You've got to have enough room for the GPS. You have to have, you know, circuit boards and everything else that goes along with it. So now if we're stuffing, you know, some sort of a beeper into it, how much bigger does that box going to have to be? So I think there's probably a lot to do with that. And then when you break down how many guys use this for, for as houndsmen and, and other types of, uh, you know, hunting with dogs that, that would never require a beeper, you know, is the market big enough with just the upland, ver you know, upland guys enough to justify the, the R and D for, for setting something like that up. Yeah. And that's just kind of the long and short of it. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, there's a lot of different, a lot of different people you with, you know, and the upland guys that like the beeper and I get it hundred percent. I get it. Um, but the answer there is you put the nail on the head. Like when you think about the and everything that's going on and then that's a lot of technology that's going in in that small little space. And the other thing, when you look at the TT15 versus the TT15 Mini, that Mini is way smaller and lighter, and our dog guys like that. It's, we don't want to put any more on that collar than we already got, right? So um, that's just kind of, there is limitation, limitation of technology and space availability, I guess, is what you'd say with that. And it happens, you know, so you, you, not that we talked about it, but I, uh, I'm, I'm a full-time employee at Ryzen, right? So you know, w w the cell phones are getting packed and, and jam packed with more and more stuff. And, you know, we're losing stuff like, uh, you know, earbud jacks and things like that. And, and it's strictly not because of cost or anything. It's just strictly how much stuff can you touch you stuff into a piece of technology before the technology just, you know, doesn't become usable. And, and it's probably something similar, you know, like we talked just with the Garmin or with the TT15s. But um, so this custom. Uh, so, hi, I'm new to GPS systems. Um, will I be able to connect multiple handhelds to the TT collars so I can track my buddy's dogs as well? So you, you can track yes. people's handhelds on it and you can also track other dogs on it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you can pay, basically pair your alpha 200 handhelds together. So you're tracking each other and right. then, then it goes back to, you know, here's you can add up to 200 dogs, and then you can create groups with your buddy's dog. So you can essentially turn, you know, if you're running, you know, your buddy's running two setters, and you you add them to their own group. You can turn that toggle that that group on and off if you want to to track them and when you need to track them. Right. Yeah, I think the simplest way to answer his, his last comment there is so you can track his buddy's dogs. They're all the same callers, TT15 minis. You can you can track all the callers. You can track all your friends' dogs if you if you're in this alpha Garmin world, and even like a if you're if a friend has a a 550 plus, that dog has a T15 
TT15 collar, Rayhan? Is that yeah, true? So, all, so going back into the Astro, the Astros use the T5. So really when you look at it, this is one of the nice things about the 200i as well in the sense that you have – they're still running on TT15, TT15 Mini, T5, or T5 Minis. And so those all work, you know, coming back to the Astro all the way up. So if you have a 100, you've got a Pro 550 Plus, you have a 200 up there. That you can kind of, you know. Yeah. yeah. So if your friend has a Garmin GPS dog collar, more than likely you can track it on your Alpha. Right. Yeah. And, and Which I is. believe that you can actually go uh, backwards compatible with tracking, you know, if, if I've got the 200i and Nick's got his 100, I can essentially track his 100 handheld as well. I don't yes. think it does the Astros, but I know it does uh, the Alpha 100. I don't think it would do the Astros, but I didn't think it would be backwards on that side. Yeah. Um, so someone asked, is the 550 plus being phased out, you know, in... I mean, if, I'll see if I can find that one. I think they're they're probably two completely different customer types that are that are looking for that. But I'll let you answer that. Yeah. yeah so no is the answer to that. Absolutely not. That unit. Um, when you look at it, and I'll pull one up here real quick. Sorry, this is one I was using the other day. Um, for those of you not familiar, the 550 plus is that right, and it's just robust training, simple tracking. So that actually turns into a little bit of a delta down there to track dogs, and it pretty much just gives you where your dog is, whether it's on point in the distance. Um, that is not being phased out at all. When you look at it, um, the first iteration of the track and train was the Alpha 100, right? so that incorporated both GPS tracking and the ability for training, um, and then. When that first hit, everybody was like, man, this is incredible. But there was a group of people that are like, this is too much tech for me. I don't I don't want all of this stuff. But I love the functionality of what it does. I don't <laughs> Ron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, Ron, I think Ron runs the 550 plus. Yeah. Yep. I'd be sad I, if they decided to phase that out. Yeah. Ray, Ray said that to me a year ago. And between that and the watch, I got my heart rate, my blood pressure, and as long as that doesn't send a red flag, I know where my dogs are. <laughs> and we talked about it on my podcast. There's people that love that all that extra stuff, and I get it. And I'm more excited about the uh, the zero about shooting, you know, shooting clay targets than I am, you know, the super high tech. That 550 plus. I told you when we started the podcast, you guys could have shut your doors right there and just made 550 pluses. <laughs> You, I mean, well, we have the 200 I, Ron. <laughs> I know we're supposed to be promoting it. I know that. I just no, say, no, you what, guys, you're at, what, what you're getting at, Ron, is is just dead on in the sense where it's it, like that's a unit that you know for that, people who want that specific thing. That's what it is. And, it's not and that is truly, truly still a tracking and training collar. Yeah. It's on that same format. It's on that same model of all the Tritronics, and it, it's there's there's no like all you do. You don't have to, there's no learning curve to go into the 550 plus. You just get this extra little screen on there. Yeah, and, no. And a, you that can train your dogs awesome. with it. it out of the box. Can, yeah, it, it's yeah. you know, and I I love all the technology and I love all that. But I'm, I, you know, when that person wrote that question, I'm like, oh, is that real? <laughs> Please never stop that. So, sorry, I was looking off the screen. I was texting the dude who created, <laughs> he created the alpha. His name's Sean, you know, he used to down at the Tritronics office. <laughs> Five, ten seconds is the answer between when, it, when it's going on point because it's having to find a balance to avoid false points. Gotcha. Five to ten. Yeah, Nick, if we're going with the, you know, Bob Barker, I feel like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he got the well, seven seconds. I will say that that is also one of the reasons I use a bell on my dogs, if anybody cares. But a bell is instant feedback. If my dog is in bell range and he stops and goes on point, I don't need the – it's nice that the Garmin's going to tell me that he's on point, but I'm getting instantaneous feedback. That's one of the main reasons I run a bell. Yeah. Yeah, and so but you're running the alpha, a beeper, and the bell, right? You, yes. You're like a triple redundancy. Yeah, I'm I'm running them all, and I've I've written about it. Like I see the value in all three, 
all three methods and it's crazy a little bit but rose doesn't have a beeper on because i don't really have the system that would work so rose is just running i've got her on a tt15 mini thank gosh because she needs a gps collar on her it's crazy she stays with me really well but i'm able to actually relax with that garmin mini on her and then she's got she's got a little little jingle bell on there that i can hear what she's doing when she's in range but when she's out of range i got the got the mini and i love it and the one thing that frustrated, I think, with the 550, because I, I, I played around with that for, I don't know, half a season, is that if, if you lose GPS signal, the 550, the training uh, part of it, the, the stimulation goes away until you regain it. Um, you know, so depending on where you hunt, if you spend a lot of time in, in areas where you have the propensity to drop GPS uh, signal, you know, that, yeah. that like may Chuck or may not. What did I tell you about Chuck or Hunters? <laughs> I don't care about Chuck or Hunters. Um, you don't care about chucker hunters. You don't care about chucker hunters. So, <laughs> any chance the, uh, the friend, unit includes a, a flush count uh, page? Um, that's a that's a. I would love that, but that's pretty pretty niche. But that's a good question from Jason. Mm, that's a good question. I, don't know that. flush yeah. count. I believe but, your instinct watch can do it. Yeah, your so, instinct can do it, and then just what I've. What? What? Yeah. Hey, hey, let let's go old school. How about let's use your memory? Gee, many Christmas. Oh How yeah. How many more gadgets do we need? I just that old guy that watched it. Tell me how your instinct can do flush counts. I think I think the Phoenix can too. Can it? Well, I explained this on my podcast that I've got a I've got a weird way of doing it using the lap timer, but it's There's not. A there's oh, a go hunt ahead, Rand. within the instinct, and I think it's in the Phoenix now as well. Yeah. You can start a hunt, and you can say, essentially, it's saving points where it's lapping. What you're doing, but in a formalized method. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so you're like, saying that myself and Ted, Ted Summer, we were ahead of the curve. We're not getting royalties for that, I don't think. Uh, no, you're not, Nick. <laughs> 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 hey, hey uh, Nick. Hey, Nick. Yeah. Yeah, I was a little nervous when you started mentioning lap counts. I thought you were talking about laps in the pool. I thought you were going there already. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a really good segue. I mean, we could have we could have checked yeah. that box. We 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 could have we could have, but we didn't. <laughs> Your mind got there before mine. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So this was another question that came up multiple times. Uh, that, you know, for a lot of times I was one of those guys running the Alpha One Hundred with my Onyx chip. Um, the 200, the, the chip doesn't work. So you, you don't have the ability to do landowner and boundaries. Um, you know, I, I've got my speculations to some things that are maybe happen in the background with Garmin, but do you, do you see that coming or do you see Garmin coming up with a, a solution for that? In terms of the ability to use Onyx within the 200i? Yeah. Um, I don't have an answer for that one right now. Um, you know, in those situations, I guess what I'd tell you is, um, I don't have an answer for you on that one. Uh, we do have Hunt View cards if anybody's looking for that. Mm -hmm. um, Hunt View cards provide similar information, landowner property, um, boundaries, public, private, et cetera. Um, you can download those and you can also get the chip also for that one. So if you are looking for that with the 200i, uh, check out the Hunt View cards. And Pat was asking, you know, so are you saying the 200 doesn't lose the ability, the training ability with the GPS? Um, I don't believe that the, the 200 and or the 100. Um, so if GPS signal loses because the GPS and the training are, are run off of two separate radios on the on the Alpha series. Yeah, I believe that is correct. And one of the yeah. things that, for example, with the, as you touched on, some people wanted to use the Profile 50 kit inside, for example, if they're trying to train indoors or something like that. And I've just always kind of warning people like, hey, you know, just be careful. But the other thing too is if you would get, you know, the way around that is if you're getting GPS, and you can keep it, you'll still have that even if it's indoors, right? Yeah. So Brock, I appreciate you making it a whole hour without <laughs> making fun of my pointing labs. I appreciate that. He, he runs Brits, doesn't he? Brock I'm guy? sure, do you guys remember? I think he's, a, I think he's running Brockos. I think, I think he, he, I think he looks like that a up, but... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, why is Ron so fired up? Ron is, uh, we're talking about technology, so there's probably a reason why Ron's not talking. You're on mute, Ron. Hold on. There you, there you go. go. Go ahead. Oh, 
sorry, I didn't know I was muted. <laughs> now, I'm trying to I'm trying to absorb and learn and be a little bit more OEK progressive not the right word. A little more woke. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to be all things to all listeners. I give it up to you. You're you're you got an open mind, you're listening, you're I I give it to you, Ron. Unless, yeah, I I'm open to everybody unless you're a trucker hunter and you want your SOS signal to work in a canyon. I'm sorry. You should have thought about that before you got out of the truck. <laughs> I, I love we're discovering new things about Ron and Trucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that animosity has never yeah. shown itself before. <laughs> yeah. what's, what's the max size SD card for the 200i? Jeez, I guys, I don't know that one. That's yeah, whatever the whatever. I, the I would say that it, I think you can you do 128, at least 128 gig. I'm pretty can sure it'll. Shoot, I'm gonna look it up. Can we shoot movies on the on, on the i200? <laughs> can you do what? Just shoot. Movies. Can we shoot some video on it next? This is next. We need, we need to make the the 200 O being the 200 with optics with a camera built into it. Yeah, can you take selfies with it? Yeah. <laughs> what the I'm hell? <laughs> they, I, they, you know what? Uh, they should have a selfie camera on it. What, I, suppose the, they, uh, I suppose they figure everybody has a, uh, a cell phone with them, too. <laughs> well, it's funny that there's another unit. It's not a dog tracking unit. It's called the Montana 750i. Oh, yeah. Um, that has, you know, it's essentially... Or not it's not the same unit, it's a different platform, but it's similar in the sense that it has in reach. It's a really awesome handheld GPS, but then it also does have a camera in it. And but the reason for that is a lot of times people are using that for scouting and stuff like that. Taking pictures with your waypoints. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, all right, let me pull up some of these other questions. I thought I had them all written down, but I guess I didn't. Uh, oh, do you know uh, so the Garmin Explorer app, um, I know that you can pair that with the 550 and it's going to give you a little bit. So if you buy a 550 plus and you're, you know, it's, it's got, you know, essentially the similar directional, you know, type compass to locate your dog, but you can pair it with a, with the Garmin Explorer app. So maybe can you talk a little bit what the, what the Explorer app is and then, you know, how does that kind of pair or partner with a 550 plus if, if somebody's running that right now? Yeah, so a couple different things. You can actually track your dogs now um, within that Explore app. You can't train with it, but you can you can track your dogs with it. So Garmin Explore is kind of the back end app. It's a free app that people or that you can download uh, on your phone, and it gives you the ability to essentially access data. It gives you mapping. You can route. You can plan your trips, etc. And so it's just kind of a, a tool to use. Um, for more mapping capabilities that you use online, offline, um, from your phone. I'm getting it right now. Yeah, download it. I mean, you can get bird's eye on it. You get all sorts of different data within it. Like I said, waypoints, routes, all that different stuff. So, you know, made for the out, you know, off-grid adventurer, you know, outdoor enthusiast. And so you can essentially, like I said, everything's housed on your phone from that side. And it also works within the ecosystem that you can, you know, pair units into it. And what's cool if you're hunting with a buddy that doesn't have a uh, the Alpha 100 or the Alpha 200 handheld, and they want to track your dogs while you're hunting, you know, you can you can get them signed into your Garmin app, your Garmin Explorer app, and they can kind of keep track of your dogs too while you're hunting together. Yeah. All right, guys. So we are at the top of the hour, and by popular uh, demand, between we got Dry Fly, we got Pat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wanting to, to get a little bit away from the Garmin, maybe talk a little bit of some hunting stories. Um, do we want to take a quick couple of minutes to uh, grab beer and refresh before we come back and, yep. and maybe talk about what everyone's been up to lately? Everybody Sounds good with that? Good. Yeah, that's fine. All right. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Round right. two's coming up. Oh, yeah.
Oh yeah, God, that would have hurt something. Rusty, you don't work here. <laughs> Ron, was that you? About what? Talking about Rusty. Yeah, yeah. Roof, roof. Uh, my my producer's over in the corner over here. And uh, yeah, I was I was yakking at him. Never met a Rusty I don't like. <laughs> okay. So if you turn your phone sideways, you could probably both get in there. Well, let me see. Hey, look at that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> wow. I meant to we tell went, you that we earlier. Went a but... full 60 vertical, and now we're going. Let me show you a little bit of the. That looks like 4K. Is that 4K? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty cool. This is the, this little bar back That's here. That's cool. And this this is the White Lake Hunting Lodge here. A little shameless wet plug, White Lake Hunting Lodge. I like the looks yeah, of that really. place. Yeah, hey, Ruth. I mean, they, they they take good care of me here. And Casey Casey comes down. He just brought in a couple cases of beer. And Jeez. Man, how do you argue with that shit? What's the weather like over there? Is there snow on the ground? Oh, oh it. I'm telling you what. Now, roof, roof at Rusty. I call him Roof. He got here Friday night. And it was about zero, and it's been zero at night for Oof. three nights. Today it got up to about 30, 35, very comfortable. Yeah. And uh, it's going to get – is it going to get that cold tonight, Roof, in the 20s? Got to be warming um, up but, with the weather coming yeah, this way. Yeah, it's warming up. But I have never been in South Dakota at the end of October All right. and saw snow cover everywhere. Which I'm also thinking, oh, well, it would be good to get the birds, but it's not that much snow cover. It's just like four inches of everything everywhere yeah. with no like no real impact on the birds. And I only – I didn't hunt probably two hours today. Did not – I heard birds. Sounds like a grouse hunter, doesn't it? I heard birds. <laughs> yeah, I heard a few. <laughs> yeah, I heard a few. And uh, But I was at this little reservoir, and I – I'm like, oh, that's a good spot to look. We'll look around here, and I'm hearing. Dur, 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 dur. I'm like, well, what are you doing on the other side of the reservoir? And, uh, but you know, funny. This is something. This is a true observation of South Dakota, and I know they got wild birds here, and there's a lot of preserves, and there's a lot of lodges. But if you get in the wrong area of South Dakota or even North Dakota. You could drive around all day. You ain't gonna see hardly a bird. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's it's. I don't want anybody to think you could come here and just drive down every county county road. Yeah. And just ditch them. It it's legal, but you know, there's a lot of cattle. I here's a true thing. I saw a flock of twelve sharp tails and two sh single sharp tails today, and I did not see that many pheasants. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hunt so, sharp tail there right now? Yeah. So. Oh, trust me. When when I saw that flock get up, I'm like, I wonder how much the trespassing ticket's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't doesn't the uh, doesn't your partnership with South Dakota Tourism can't you just don't you have like a key to the state? Go anywhere? <laughs> well, you know, you one would think so, Nick. I mean, like <laughs> you know, <laughs> I got. I'll bring that up in the next contract next. Yeah, August because, I mean, you should be yeah, able I mean, to go. You should have full access. And then, and then, what really, really grinds my gourd <laughs> is I've been, I've been writing to Christy Nome for two weeks, telling her I'm coming out here, telling her we're going to be at the White Lake Hunting Lodge. I want to do a podcast with her. Not one, not one peep from her. She she wrote Brent a nice letter. Yeah, because he Maybe sent her hat. Right? The right people. <laughs> he can her the best. Yeah. Now one peep from oh, Christy best. Noon. And you know, and you know, there's no way she wouldn't want to be out here. So I, I think it's I can her. think of one reason why she doesn't want to be out there right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't gonna go there, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's not uh, neglect the elephant in the room. 
But she could have at least answered my Instagram. I even wrote to the governor's office. Do you think she actually, that's your first mistake. Do you think she actually checks her own Instagram? Rayhan's like, what? No. No, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining what that letter was. <laughs> you know what? Let's look it up real quick. Hold on. That's a good point. Considering as little as I am in this world, you do my Instagram. I'm sure Christy doesn't do her Instagram. Rod's got a handler. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. That's funny. Oh, man. Rayon. I don't know how to recover yeah, yeah. from that. Where is What's your up? what is your most recent hunt? No, wait, I want to back up and talk about something. Um, right. you remember Steve? You know Steve? Yep. This is just a fun I'm gonna throw it past you. I've always thought about this. He's like his his family came to Kansas and covered wagons. He's the most diehard Kansan I've ever met. And he hunts Kansas. He's got, you know, his goal is to kill something in every county and he's well on his way. And this, what Ron said reminded me, he's got a theory in Kansas where he's like, if you're in good cover and you don't see birds within an hour, you mm -hmm. need to pick up and move yep. 60 miles in one way or the other, because there's an yep. isolated event that took place and yep. there's nothing you're going to do about it. So I, 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 I agree with that hundred percent. Yeah, I thought I've always thought that was a, a good one. So if anybody's coming to Kansas this year, keep that in mind. And that's cool. So far, it's really been true. In so. an hour, if I don't find birds in twenty minutes here in Michigan, I'm picking up and I'm moving. <laughs> well, it's just one of the things where it's like you know, big country like that and the Dakotas mm -hmm. and like that. It's like you can you can throw in some miles, but so yeah. just piece of information for everybody. Nick, what was your question? Yeah. Uh, your most recent hunt. Uh, well, that would have been you with you, buddy boy. Oh, it I was. Mean, well, yeah, I mean, I've been, man, I've been grinding since. It's kind of in a weird place, too, where there's not a lot open right now. Like, Woodcock is technically open, but like we were talking about, they haven't really pushed down yet. Quail yeah. opens up on the first. You know, duck. That's I was kind of curious where you're at with things. Oh, God. Season wise, but yeah. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> you know, there's nothing. It's just that weird lull. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Call before the storm. Yeah, I guess. And it's kind of weird. I'm like, you know, we all know that we're cautiously optimistic mm -hmm. about this season, is what I would say. And uh, it's a weird one because two years ago, I probably had one of the best seasons I've had since I was a boy. Um, and then last year, it's like it just dropped off the face of the earth around You're talking East. specifically quail? Or yeah, quail. Yeah. Um, and for me, that was both on the most on the Missouri side, but Kansas side as well. Okay. So, for what that's worth. But anyways, I'm, you know, it's like, for around here, it has to do with, you know, how bad was the winter and how bad it was the spring. Yeah. So, uh, I think we caught a couple of good breaks. So, like I said, looking forward to it this season. So, Pat, in case you, uh, you, you missed it, uh, Rayhan is in Kansas City. Yep. Kansas. But uh, I think Missouri is where he, he called home growing up. Is, yeah. That's what you got to know about Kansas City. When you're from Kansas City, you're from Kansas City. You're not from the state. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Dual citizenship. You gotta, where, here's where. So where are you from? Well, I'm from Kansas City. The second question is, okay, where does your barbecue alliance lie? And the third question is, what state are you from? And that, that's everything you need to know about you know, somebody from Kansas City. Like, you know, I grew up white and – Yo, what? I, I could tell you a story about a – job I worked in Kansas City. Oh my God. Let's I met this girl. I met this girl and I met her in Ron. Kansas Here we City, go. Missouri. And I had to bring her back to Kansas City, Kansas. And then I had to get back to Kansas City, Missouri. It was a all was the a days long night. Hopefully she was legal age going across the street. <laughs> 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 Lines probably got a little blurry there too. <laughs> Tell the story, Ron. I think he tried to tell it. It's probably that that was it. Yeah, we oh, caught the gist was, of it there. I was just saying that I met a girl in Kansas City, Missouri. I had to go to Kansas City, Kansas with her, and I went back. I had to drop her off. I I, I saw I met her in one state. I went to another state to party with her, and I had to bring her back to another state. Like I was doing like interstate commerce of whatever you'd call it. We call that trafficking now. No, not trafficking, Doug. <laughs> 
It was interstate courtship. <laughs> I heard I heard roof in the back that said that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I tuned out there for like two seconds, and then I got to what I, you guys. <laughs> I like Nick's answer: interstate courtship. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving right along. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> By the way, whoever asked the question, it's a 32 gig uh, SD card. Oh, I found that out. So FYI on that one, I wanted to bring so in that that's like 32 gigs of like satellite imagery you can drop on there. What am I saving on my card? Yeah, that's what you got there, Nick. Okay, all right. Okay. So, what about you? I mean, like, what about you guys? I mean, Doug, what are you hunting? So I just got back about seven days ago from uh, my first trip out to North Dakota. Nice. Which was a pretty epic experience for me, one that uh, I am counting down the days in my brain until I get to go back. <laughs> um, and, and I'll tell you that first week back, it was it was really trying on me, trying to get refocused and get back into the swing of things. Um, it was uh, it was rough, but so I've been out goose hunting a couple times, do goose and duck. Um, I've been out grouse chasing grouse a couple times. Um, not getting into a ton of woodcock this year. The grouse, you know, I, I feel like in the beginning of the year, the grouse were, numbers were a lot better for me. And uh, since I've been back, you know, I think as you stick through the season, you kind of move along with the grouse. And I came back and they were just gone. So I'm still trying to kind of reestablish where where they're at and where they're hanging out at in uh, the food that they're that they're using. Um, so I haven't had a ton of a ton of uh, opportunities to get into grouse so far. Uh, I took a chunk out of my cornea yesterday while I was goose hunting. <laughs> I, I went out goose hunting with a buddy uh, in the middle of the state, and uh, we had geese up the wazoo that were, uh, you know, turning and burning in the field, and we just kept getting blown out. They'd, they'd come in, and they'd, then they'd quickly burn off. And uh, we decided that the the panel blinds that we're using just were, uh, were not – we're not doing it for us so rather than continuing to blow out the the few hundred geese that were that were still meant to come we we quickly jumped out of them we broke the panels down and we were carrying them off into the tree line to get them off the field and a uh some egyptian wheat got jabbed me in the eye Oof. so i was uh on the phone with ron for a little while and i was like i, I gotta go i gotta get, i gotta get into the doctor and it uh it turned out that a little chunk of it so they put a nice little contact lens over my eye and all as well now. Ouch. Yeah. But that's, that's that's the worst feeling. I had Nick, I had that happen grouse hunting like three years ago where I just took a I was shooting at grouse and then like excited walked straight into a branch and ended yep. up at ER and like no offense to the state of Minnesota on when I say this, but it was like the sketchiest ER I've ever seen. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they so you know, you know and I've I've cut my eye up. I, I could say at least a dozen times I've gotten scratches in my eye, whether it was grouse hunting or at work or whatever. And, you know, it's usually you just suck it up, but I'm on the phone. And I was ironically just talking to Ron, but it was, it was like a pain that I had never felt before. And uh, it, my eye was just pouring tears. And uh, it was, I looked like a blubbering idiot. So, well, let's, so let's water, honest, water. Doug. Doug, let's be honest. I started telling you some stories about being a millwright and getting shit in my eyes. I said, and you scared the shit out of me. <laughs> right. I said, you need, you need to get off this phone and go to the Medi Center. I said, if nothing else, they'll put a couple drops of this eyeball Novocaine, and you are going to be a happy camper. They didn't do that uh, for me. I can tell you I that. They just put this weird contact lens over my eye. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. probably, had, probably had something on it. Yeah, maybe. I got a question for everybody on this call. And, you know, one of the things that as I've been getting older, like I, for the longest time, we're talking about eyes. Like now, like I was blind in this eye for a while, messing around. And then I nearly lost this one. And so I'm always wearing glasses now. But I'm sort of paying more and more attention to hearing wires just because of the amount of guns we shoot. What do you guys use for hearing protection? Do you use them? Haven't used any while hunting. What? I haven't used any while hunting. Okay. I have a. I've got a brand spanking new set of ESP electronic shooter protection that I have used on the clay range, but it's 
I don't really have a good excuse for not using them other than I'm just I I know people that have them and use them and I'm just worried about not being able to hear the birds flush in the right way and I just haven't haven't taken the time to fiddle with them and test them out but it's something I think about too because I know as I'm sure you probably do Rayhan a lot of people a lot of old grouse hunters that I talk to that they say they can't hear them flush anymore and like the thought of that it's kind of scares the heck out of me well, it's like I've started getting tinnitus, on, and, and yeah. that really scares. Me. And it's not bad, but it's just like it scares the hell out of me. And uh, yeah, I mean, I did buy some. You know, I bought some. I think they're Walker game ears, and yeah. I, mm -hmm. I was so proud of them. I was like, oh yeah, my you know electronic ears, blah, blah blah blah. And I was standing in a duck marsh, and I leaned over, and sure enough, it just fell right into the water, and I lost them. So, yeah. for what that's worth. I they're think not, if I was duck hunting, and I'd be curious what Doug says, if I think if I was duck hunting, I would have my ESPs in 100% of the time. Yeah, you know, so if I'm hunting in a layout blind, I typically don't have anything in except for just the foamy in the one ear. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm hunting in a, in a panel blind or if I'm hunting in, you know, some sort of an A-frame with a bunch of guys, you know, I'll, I'll definitely throw um, the foam in. I, I do want to get a set of electronic. I think me and Nick talked about this a while back. Um but I'm a cheap bastard and, and to, to spend $2,500 on a decent pair of electronics right now just seems crazy to me. Well, um, you, but I, yo, Doug, you can spend a lot less than that. You yeah. can, I mean, but, you can. I, but I don't do anything half-assed. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to, you know, yeah, there's a reason why I had to get the, you know, the alpha 200 and the newest of everything. I'm just, I'm kind of a gear idiot like that. So if I'm going to have it, I want, I need to have the best one out there. I'll, I'll come from the voice of wisdom and age. Yep. You know, when I started working in construction, they didn't even hand out safety glasses at places, let alone ear protection. And my ears ring 24-7 like somebody's got a, a tuning fork in it. So all I'll tell you is do the best you can to do. And I don't think when you're, when you're bird hunting, the barrel's out there, unless you're in a duck blind, I don't think it's going to do a lot of damage, but it, sporting clays, trap shooting off the, yeah. off the tailgate, mm -hmm. God, put, I put, I'll put a cigarette butt in my ear. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, you. Yeah, I think I've seen do, that before. Yeah, you do <laughs> not want to have the ringing in your ears that I do. So, do something seriously. Yeah. And I don't think a shot every twenty minutes in a grouse woods or every hour. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's probably not good. It's but better it's to block enough. it out, but it's not going to add up as fast. Right. But yeah. if you're going to do any repetitive shooting, I mean, we used yeah. to run one-inch hammer drills into the concrete. I did that from age 18 to 30 before I went out on my own. No no uh, hearing protection. No. I got a whipple <laughs> wheel. There's a whipple wheel sits outside my window in Michigan. If I lay on my pillow on my right side... I can hear the whippoorwill. If I lay on my pillow on the right side, I think my wife closed the window. He's got two right ears. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy, though. So, so are you looking yeah. at jumping into the world of electronic hearing, or? Well, I, I did, oh, I don't know if Rayhan has. I got a pair. Haven't used them yet, but. Um, yeah. So I I did I got the Walker game ears and there's a lot of different things you can do right like yep. Tom Gear makes good ones there's a whole bunch of other ones but those uh, it was my some of my pheasant hunting buddies in Minnesota started getting them and they loved them and they also they sell rock and move rock and they use those so I got them and I actually really liked them um, I think they were like 250 bucks for me I was just yeah, I didn't put anything in it was a frozen duck blind and so when i leaned over yeah. um i had used them you know for a while and, and i did like them so i'm gonna probably pick up another pair of those but i don't know man that's just something i've been thinking more and more it's like you know we'll talk about with safety you know whenever you're taking a new guy hunting or something like that i always say it's like you know one bird's not worth it one bird's not worth a bad shot you know and then it's like really when you start thinking about it like and all those shots start adding up, and, and when it comes to eyes and ears, like yep. you only get one set of them, right? So mm -hmm. take care. Of them. Yeah, that I was gonna comment about the whole eye protection thing because I I went a long time in the grouse woods without wearing eye protection, and I hunted a little bit differently. I didn't put myself 
in harm's way as much, but I did take a number seven and a half pellet to my eyebrow one time, which I've told on here before. Mm -hmm. And I now wear eye protection all the time. Waterfall is kind of one of those weird things because I think a lot of people don't wear them because you don't want the birds seeing that, you know, the glare and stuff. So I get it. So I'm guessing you weren't wearing glasses the other day. You know, I have a really nice set of uh, of Beretta um, shooting glasses, right? And okay. I, I do wear them pretty much every time I had I get out in the grouse woods, you okay. know. And they're they're I've got the the interchangeable pink and clear lenses. Yeah. Um. You know. And honestly, when I'm duck hunting, I I'm not worried about a, you know, a bird. Well, you're not busting. moving. I mean, you're sitting. Yeah. In one and I'm, I mean, yeah. And I don't get it all paranoid. You know, I don't think camouflage makes as much. Mm. You know. You know I what believe. pattern camouflage is. You know. I mean, my dogs are sitting out in a in a dog hut with a bright blue collar and we still kill, right, kill birds right? right i you know i think it matters and i think you can you know it all has some sort of an impact but am i really worried about them catching the glare off of it when i'm using a blued gun you know i don't even use a match and gun a lot of times sure, I, i'm, I'm shooting sure. a blued gun um i just never thought about wearing them while duck hunting yeah now i probably will right now yeah I, probably will. I, I mean to rehan's point like yeah you don't you don't get another set of eyes or ears. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm by no means the model citizen. Like I, I take unnecessary risks, but it's never, never hurts to be reminded of it. And I'm not a model citizen either. That's why I was <laughs> right. asking you guys. Like, yeah. So I'm glad to hear we're all kind of in the same boat, even if we're yeah. going slowly, you know? Yeah. Even with my, even with my, my glasses on, I get a stick up underneath them or, I mean, it's like, it's, there are risks involved when you're beating away the cover. Like it's, you're going to get, you're going to get hit. So if I can avoid something by wearing shooting glasses, I'm going to, you can bet I'm going to have them on. Yeah. I feel Roberts does wear sunglasses while he's, uh, while he's duck hunting. That's there a good, you go. That's a good point. I mean, if Phil does it, why? <laughs> a lot of guys, a, you got a hat on too. So it's not like you got all kinds of sunlight flooding on those. And things. I really don't I, care. I would like to talk about sun protection. Yeah. Now, I know I was kind of picking on Nick a few months ago about his hat. And now I'm looking at Doug's hat, and that's got way too much sun protection. <laughs> too that flat? Is, that is way too flat. You, can, <laughs> you look like Donald Duck. Okay? <laughs> so... This got a nice curve to it, doesn't it, Ron? Yeah, no, yeah, Nick, you you you're rocking it. Your mustache is coming back. Your hat's I've curving. I've got to let this thing go. And, and, and it only Doug took him seven was, weeks to grow the mustache. Try seven months. <laughs> well, we, we know that we That's we didn't want to bring it up to the forefront. I appreciate that. When when you're older, you'll you'll grow a beard. Don't worry about it. It, it happens. Someday. You'll have you'll have hair on your back. Your wife will think you have a sweater on. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can do something about your hat brim. Correct. Okay? You can't do anything about your facial hair. But your hat brim you can control. And, Doug, I'm uh, telling you, if you wear that uh, hat brim on the next Hunter's Happy Hour, we're done. Too much sun <laughs> protection. We're, you're going to 86 me from the show? That's the hashtag. Too much sun protection. Yeah. HDP. Here. Does that make you feel that better? better. Yeah, that's better. So this is somehow this this is somehow more acceptable than, than the bill being up front. I have to put a hat on because I don't have much left up here. I don't have those wavy locks that Rayhan's got. Dave, let, let me ask you this, Doug. Doesn't even feel better to turn it around. No. Don't don't you feel like you have like a, a wind sail out in front of your face? No. Really? Did you have you ever looked in the mirror with that hat on? I, I got a hot wife. What do I? Who do I have to impress? Well, how about how about let's keep your hot wife impressed? Because <laughs> but I'm telling she's, you, she's what. nine years younger than me. I have to keep up with the times. Isn't no, this what no, the kids no, are wearing? No. No. no, If you gotta if you gotta wear a flat brim hat, you got more problems than that. Let's get let's dial this in a little bit. Uh between chucker hunting and flat brims, Ron's taking a stance. It's huge. It's it's election season. I feel season. like I, I, I mean, say it's election he, season. Yeah, he's waving the flag. It's Boys, right. I was really looking forward to this trio, and I'm glad <laughs> I could be a part of it. <laughs> I'm glad you don't feel the he's over there playing opposite. Candy Crush right now. <laughs> Rayhan's playing Candy Crush. Um, you know what, Rayhan? 
let, let's be honest. Now I got to pick on everybody. <clears throat> I asked Rayhan about his hairdo, and it's not a hairdo. It's a hair I don't care. It's a hair don't. And it's starting to be like you could probably do like a Civil War reenactment because your hair <laughs> looks like you know, like. You're not supposed yeah. to insult the guest. This sounds it's, like fashion you advice. Just figured it out. You just figured it out, bud. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. You do cl- you're a closet reenactor? I was thinking about it. I was like, man, I really want to get into the Civil War reenacting. Maybe there'll be a global pandemic where I'll be working from home and can grow my hair out. Let's Perfect. Ab- absolutely. Absolutely. Brock Guy makes an obvious point that Ron has the second flattest broom on the show. Yep. Oh, no, wait. Well, that's a first light hat, too. That's trendy. It's trendy and flat. Hey, you know what? You don't see this hat anywhere. There ain't a whole lot of them. No, because if I had one, it it would say Pike Gear. (laughs) What? I'm sorry, what? Wait, 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 wait. Look at this. Yeah. There we go. Rayhan Man, is wait, a Viking name, so the hair is appropriate. Everything. Let's start uh-huh. going all Garmin here. There's That's Garmin cool. right there. Mini. What? Aren't you glad I let you borrow my collar to take out there so you had it for this? Oh, oh borrow your collar. Listen, <laughs> I gave I – gave... <laughs> oh. We're just going to go ahead and mute, mute him. <laughs> I like don't it. Me. Don't you dare mute me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a low blow. <laughs> uh, Run right. against the mullet as well. <laughs> am, I, am I muted? No, you're no. not muted. You haven't okay. been. You're, you're just okay. sitting there rambling on. And we're so, talking okay. about I, I, Amber I, Waves. <laughs> so when, when Rayhan sent me the 550 plus and I fell in love with this, I'm like, oh, my God. It's so like it's perfect for me. Mm-hmm. I'm talking with Doug, who helps me with Instagram, and we're buddies. And I said, you know, I got a, I got a, I got an Alpha 100, or the, uh, yeah, Alpha 100. And he goes, yep. well, what do you want for it? It's not, I'll just, you know, send me an extra collar. He got an Alpha 100 and sent me a TT 100 collar. Tell me who got a deal on that. And then you're gonna sit there and wear a flat brim hat when I'm talking to you. Oh, uh, all right. So <laughs> I don't even know. Dale, somebody says that you look like uh, a Game, Game of, Thrones of Thrones actor. Actor, yeah. So the Viking thing fits. No, it's Vikings. Vikings. Uh, not Viking at all. Uh, my mom's from the smallest town in Missouri you can possibly find. And my dad's <laughs> from Pakistan, so that's where the name comes from. <laughs> Not even, not even closer now. Not, not even the same time, boys. But so oh. you're, you're 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 breaking the mold on the hair thing, like Missouri, Pakistan, and like you're you're still going great Game of Thrones hair there. Yeah, this used to be like I used to have way yeah way longer. How did we get on the top of my head? Why? Well, I thought this was like birds. We started a fashion segment. It started with hats, and then it went to hair. Let's yeah, go back. yep. Let's do something else. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and mute. So let, I guess talk, go ahead, Ron. Let, let's talk about, let's talk about Nick's puppy that got a grouse. She got a grouse. I mean, I mean, Nick, I mean, not that that can't happen, yeah. but that, I mean, and you're not expecting it tomorrow and the day after and the day after she's young, but give, give me a little setup where like, I'm not saying it was a young bird, old bird, but g- give a little setup to how that how it came together. I understand context is needed. So this yeah. dog is this dog is I don't know, I'm in uncharted territory. She's her first season is way different than my first dog's first season. And part of that is was me at the time. There were certain things that my older dog hardly did his first season that probably should have resulted in birds on the ground, but didn't because I was so, which I've talked about, I was so nervous about messing things up and didn't shoot birds. Well, my puppy Rose, five months old last week, she started, she was, it was a couple of weeks ago, I was basically taking her for a puppy walk where, you know, I got the gun and everything, got all loaded up, 
put it on, put it on the bell and we're just walking down the trail going for a puppy walk and it was literally overnight one day she just decided that she was going to and and she did point some birds early that are more like you walk her into a bird right we got good numbers of birds this this year you walk her in we're walking down a trail boom she stops what is she doing is she really pointing a grouse takes off you know so she was pointing scent in that way and i did kill her first grouse kind of like that where we really walked her into it but she pointed Mm -hmm. now in the last two weeks or so this dog is running hunting covering ground she really took off with the woodcock she's pointed a bunch of woodcock i've i've missed a bunch i've killed woodcock over her points she's doing really well there she pointed a grouse on saturday that i don't know how else to to say it other than i i couldn't believe it she worked this bird pointed tracked relocated at least three times over 50 to 75 yards eventually i walked in she was locked up on a single spruce tree in a little clearing i walked in a grouse flushed out of there and i killed it i mean i don't i don't yeah and that that's like her best that's like the pinnacle pinnacle moment that's when she became a, a grouse dog yeah I, I mean certainly i'm not gonna say it's all downhill from here like she's a puppy and she's got a lot to learn but i don't know what else you would want to see from her we went out the next day on sunday and we were hunting for about 45 minutes didn't get into anything finally she went on point walked in flushed a woodcock i didn't shoot it circle around another 50 yards i can see her she's close maybe 25 yards slams on the point I walk in and end up flushing a group of six grouse. <laughs> so she's doing, oh. she's doing cool things right now. Make, it makes it a little bit easier when now that when uh, Hartley's laid off for so long, she's getting, she's getting time on the ground, but again, young dog, like we're not running more than one to two hours a day. So we're kind of, I'm not hunting her all day, but I, I but think we're, still, we're, we're benefiting. Like the, stars, the stars are lining up a little bit though. They are. I mean, she's getting she's getting her opportunities. We're finding birds. It's prime time. Like Rayhan asked me earlier, like this is it as far as grouse hunting. I've got places I can hunt where there's no snow, and we're getting her into birds, and she's doing what she needs to do. So I couldn't be happier at the moment. Yeah, yeah. take as many where you can get them. Yeah. Right. So this is and, I, and, I'll, and I'll maybe I'll say too that. I'm not doing anything like I'm just uh, I said in my Instagram post my mouth is shut I'm just all I'm doing is putting the bell on the GPS on this dog and letting her go and I'm just walking along not saying a thing so you know fortuitously you are doing probably the right thing correct because you're not you're not overthinking it you're like well um I guess we're gonna go swimming or I guess we're gonna go you know we're just gonna go do it and yeah did, I don't know. I, well, you don't come on my uh, my Zoom room for Patreons, but you I know, wanted ben to come Jones, on and talk to Justin. Actually, well, you know what? Hey, when you guys come on that, just I'll send. You know, you don't have to be a Patreon page. Just I'll send you a link. You know. Yeah. Yeah. His, his episodes are are classic. Right. But I was talking to Ben Jones a week ago, and he was telling me about his young setter puppy, about your dog's age, right? Yep. And. He went out to Minnesota, and all of a sudden, boom, grouse shot, grouse retrieved. He thought he had the second coming of Christ. Right, 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 right. And and then shortly thereafter, his GPS said 1.2 miles. Ooh. <laughs> and, 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 and he said. That's deep. Yeah, he goes like, hey, Ron, I, I don't know. What, what do I do? I'm like, look, I don't know what to do, but I'll tell you what. Come on my Zoom room this Thursday, and I sent him a link to it, and we kind of broke it down. And, you know, a little bit sometimes is you can get really lucky, and then the next thing can bring you some real bad luck. And he does not think the dog chased a deer, but there's not a lot of other conclusions you can come to. Just because you didn't see a deer, a dog can track a deer scent pretty darn good. Oh, yeah. 
mm-hmm. and I can tell you, Rose has, and, you know, and that's like she's still a puppy. She's chasing deer. Like I, she was that yeah. same walk the other day. She was, she took off. I looked down. She's two hundred yards away, and yeah. sooner or later, here comes a deer running by me, like almost right. ran into me. So right. it's like she's doing that. She was, she was twelve inches from a porcupine on Saturday, and oh. I have. I like, I have no recall on this dog because we have like, I just really mm-hmm. haven't, she stays with me well enough, but she's face to face with a porcupine and I'm, I'm like trying not to lose it, but I'm like, Rose, Rose. <laughs> and I, I'm like trying to walk the other way, maybe get her attention. And that ultimately worked. She was really curious about this porcupine and I kind of like was walking the other way, talking over my shoulder and she eventually followed me. So <laughs> that would have been she's, a perfect opportunity to do a little thrash breaking trash yeah. it would have my 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 tt15 mini is the prongs are pulled out of it because when i first started putting it on her i'm like i just you know she hasn't even been introduced yeah. to this thing i just need to track her yeah. and it's mm-hmm. it's been working but yeah it's puppies man that's it's been six years since i've had one and it's only my second one so but it's fun oh oh pat man said we need taffy stories well taffy and i just got out to south dakota here this morning, we have not we have not put a bird up, but I've she's doing. I'm not saying she's in control, but she's doing pretty good. I mean, just my my feeling about her is she's not so just wild anymore. I mean, she's wild, energetic, but it's, it's right. It's in the right zone. Um, I'll give you guys more reports here in a few days. We start hunting on Thursday here, and. Uh, I am not putting her out with the big dogs. I'm not putting her out with the professionals. But we'll have some opportunities where we got one or two more birds to get. And I'll let her get out there and get her day in the sun. In the sun. And the, the hardest part for me is I, the same thing with Nick's going through. We've all gone through. Not Doug, but Doug's going to get a pointing dog. Is you get this new dog and you're like, going, oh, I don't want this to happen. I don't want that to happen. Yeah. When I got a flushing dog. I just sat back and I'm like, oh, she's so sweet. She's so <laughs> I, I was just as bad with the person who had a pointing dog that didn't control it as somebody would be. But I thought this flushing dog was so cute, so attentive, so cooperative that I'm like, well, there's nothing could go wrong. Yeah. You know, other than a cornfield full of pheasants. <laughs> I love that story. Was, and, and, you know, I, 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 I asked that up really bad, but I think I will put her down. What I would say is in, uh, I'll put her down in habitat that's, you know, not, not corn stalks and grass. And I'll, I've got an e-collar on her now. I got the little, the little TT, the little one that Doug traded me for that alpha. Yeah. You know, that one, Doug. That alpha is this now, just so you know. (laughs) He missed. He missed. Hey, hey, Taffy just Taffy just shit in the hallway. I gotta go. I gotta. I gotta go clean it up. I'll be right Uh-oh. back. Yeah, no, I was, I, and, and you know what? We're we're getting close to the end, anyways. I, there was one other question that popped up that I, I didn't want to neglect. Um, but then I then I think we're gonna wrap things up. There was a right. um, somebody asking about the the zero S one. Yeah. Um, and just asking a little bit of you know what is it in you know if you're a bird hunter how is how is you know how is that tool gonna help you? Yeah. What real quick I want to say hey Ron. This is it. This is that oh, model. Was telling you about. Look at the straight grip on that thing. Yeah, right? That's So here's the I like deal. That. I was talking about the reason I have it is I wanted to show Ron because we were talking about it. Here's the long and short with that F1. It's probably one of the most incredible pieces of technology I've ever seen. Um, I was shooting that gun. I took that gun to Minnesota, and I hadn't shot it, and I couldn't hit a, yeah. a, a thing on it. And the entire time, I was like, man, I wish I had that S1. Because what happens with the S1, it's a little box about this big. It sits in front of you. And using high-speed camera, a bunch of different algorithms and radar, it's tracking what happens at the once the shot leaves the end of your barrel. It's starting to track that. And then it's also tracking the clay in space. And so it's seeing 
you know, through all those different things, the interception. So it's completely demystifying shooting. So now it's no longer like, am I hitting it or not? It's how well am I hitting it? Was I down into the right 12 inches? Was I over top of it? So essentially it's, it's completely broken down what happens to your shot once it leaves the end of your barrel. Um, it will teach you so much about your shooting. Like there are things that I worked on my entire life that this thing was just knocking out in a day. Um, you know, it's really, I get so excited talking about that thing because I do think it's incredible. Long will it help? Um, and, and I don't know enough, I guess, about ballistics, but you know, does it help, um, you know, measure shot string in, you know, what your sh and show you what your shot string looks like? Shot string is irrelevant for bird shooting. No, yeah. I'm just curious. I'm just curious if it, if it measures it. Yeah. So it doesn't measure the exact shot string in terms of like, you know, when you think about the shot string, the, the complete yep. length of it, what it's measuring is what it does is it's measuring the densest part of your pattern. Gotcha. If that makes any sense going yep. out into yep. space. And so it houses all kind of cumulative data and it's showing you like hits, misses, you know, and you can see all those little dots are the registered marks of where you're hitting it. So you can see that's a left justified shooter. And so it really gives you the ability to drill in on like the timing of your shooting, where your sweet spots are. It has an upland mode. So, and it also gives you a scoring ability. So if you chip it, it's a one. If you do a clean break, it's a, a two, you know. All right, uh, I gotta go. Good All luck. Right. <laughs> um, it scores it, so it actually now gives you also the ability. To, it's not enough to hit it anymore. Now you can say, "How well did I hit it?" And if you're a hundred of a hundred shooter, and I'm a hundred and hundred shooter, how do you how do you know which one's better? Now you can actually drill in on that. Yeah. Um, that's all. But the other interesting thing from the bird hunting perspective is you can set up different gun profiles on it, right? And so you can say, "Well, I want to see how well I shoot shooting." seven and a halves out of a 16 gauge mod versus, you know, an IC 20 gauge shooting six bismuth, right? Like you can drill in that far. In wow. it. Yeah. And, and really kind of, it also, you can demystify some of those old shooting things, right? Where like, okay, uh, early season, I'll shoot fives at pheasant late season. I switch back to, you know, fours or twos. Does that make sense? Like mm -hmm. you can really start seeing the effectiveness of your stuff. So, Whoever whoever asked that question, that's it's an awesome unit. I that can, I I have to like highlight one thing you talked about in Ron's podcast that I thought like just kind of maybe it was a light bulb moment for the Zero S One. Like the example you give is you go to the Clay's range and it's this whole demystifying thing. Like we have no feedback other than what <laughs> happens to the clay, right? So you shoot a clay and a little chip flies off on the right side and everybody, well, maybe not everybody, but maybe me amateur guy assumes, Oh, I chipped that on, I chipped that on the right side, but the zero S one might tell you that you actually missed it like low and left and that you have put one pellet through it. And as the clay is spinning, it throws that chip off on the right side. The zero S one is telling you where that is. Right. Yeah. One of the things where it's like, there's this old, you know, you've got best guesses, right? Where you've got your buddy sitting behind being like, yep. I think you're down a little bit that mm -hmm. way. That S1 takes all the guesswork out of it now. Yeah. Like, you know, the old thing of like watching where the wad goes. Like, that centripetal force one, like, you would chipped on the right hand side. Well, okay, I edged it with the left side of my pattern. I was shooting behind it, right? Yeah. But in reality, you could be shooting completely someplace completely different and right and so you this s1 came along you really didn't know for the most part so it can see your pattern is, is what's yeah. happening yeah. really which is crazy but yeah 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 very cool no i'm uh I, it's something you know i i just recently you know was taking you know i've been bird hunting and duck hunting for a while now um really haven't put a, a ton of time and effort into you know, finding, fine tuning my craft of, of becoming a, an expert shooter or just even a better shooter. You know, I spent a lot of time, you know, shooting a rifle and shooting a bow and making sure that, you know, when I'm big game hunting, you know, I'm, I'm hitting the spot, but I, uh, I, I dedicated a lot of time this year into, to becoming a better shooter. And I think that's a piece of equipment that next year will definitely make it out and, uh, and become part of the, the everyday 
you know, tool that we use out on the clay range. So I'm super there's, excited about that. Well, clay range, and it really does teach you just in terms of, like I said, there's an upland mode, but I'll give you another example. Like people were coming at, we're at ATA Grand American, which is the largest you know, shoot in the country. And people were coming up, adjusting their guns, like, you know, shooters who are doing this thing for like five shots, adjusting their gun, getting better, and then heading straight out to the line. Hmm. Like when it comes to the shooting stuff, like, reason I brought that gun up is because, you know, gun fit is so important. Like, you know, it can make or break, you you know, your entire shooting and it can be the smallest adjustment that you need. But sometimes it just takes like that separate look to look at it. And historically, like you, what you do, you spend countless hours and, you know, thousands of rounds, you know, hoping to fix this competitive motion. Like for years, like, I wouldn't, I'm a left eye dominant shoot, you know, left eye dominant right hand shooter. I hate taking a bird on my right side. I would wait for a bird to come into my left side whenever possible to take it, right? But with this S1 saying, okay, here's where you're missing that shot. Here's how you adjust it. Hmm. So. That's super cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, how about, how about this? Rayhan said he was going to send me one. Nick, you got to come up to Michigan this spring or summer. Let's go. You, me, you, me, Doug. We'll put it up there. We'll do a whole thing with it. That'd be sweet. And in the end, we will miss less birds. I'm in. I'm in too. <laughs> Love it. All right. Good. I want to see this. I want to hear about this. So yes, I'll get one up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Rayhan, you're invited to come up. It's just a little bit longer drive. You know. Yeah. yeah. I will. Uh, I will do my best, Ron. About that. <laughs> we'll let you know when and where, Rayhan. Yeah, Thanks. Ron's buying the food and the beer, and uh, they right, will I'll be twenty some, ounce I'll prime ribs. Miller Lite, buddy. Hey, um, hey, I'm drinking Northeast. You bring me some Northeast. I see that. Yeah, that looks yeah. good. Yeah, I'll bring you some of that. I, I love that Northeast. Mm. It's good. All right, everybody. Yeah. I'm going to. Uh, we are going to say good night and. Uh, I know we talked about it last last time we were on, but we are definitely going to do better. Tyler should be on kind of moving forward. Um, we should get into a little bit more. He's not coming back. Well, yeah, maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. Um, hunting hours are now ending before uh, before we start, so that yep. should no longer be an excuse. So we're looking forward to, to being back in, on our normal schedule and, and spending time with y'all. Um, we will be back not next week, but the week after. And uh, when we get the broadcast ended – I want you to go into the comments and drop a comment on what your favorite new feature of the new Garmin Alpha 200 is. Uh, so what's your the favorite feature that we talked about? Um, one that you, And if you've had a personal experience, go in and share that. And uh, with that being said, we are going to leave. And Rayhan, you can hold on for just a minute too um, when we get all done. So you can just kind of stick around and we'll, uh, we'll catch up afterwards. Yeah. Yes, all right. Thanks so much. Have an awesome evening, everybody. Bye. See you.